It's always been true that where a person purchases land or buildings with the intention of resale, that profits are taxable. The problem the IRB have faced is proving a person's intentions at the time the property is purchased. So the Bright Line test, which came into effect in October, is designed to tax profits on residential land where it's bought and sold within two years, regardless of one's intentions at the time of purchase. So a cynic might say that the Bright Line test was a political manoeuvre to steal the thunder from the opposition party's capital gains tax policies, but regardless, it's here to stay. So here's an outline. So the Bright Line test applies to residential land. Generally, that's land with a house on it, or land that's zoned residential. There is an exemption of one's main home, although this is not straightforward where the owner is a trust or a company, because neither a trust nor a company can have a main home. You would expect that if profits are taxable, any loss on the sale of a property within two years would be tax deductible, right? In fact, losses under the Bright Line test are ring-fenced. This means they can't be offset against other income, and can only be offset against future similar income. There's also potential for mistake when calculating the two-year time period because the date of acquisition and the date of sale are different to what we're accustomed to in the GST and income tax legislation. The two-year time period does not start until transfer of title, and this may be well after unconditional date or even well after possession date. But on the other hand, the clock stops ticking as soon as the seller enters into an agreement for sale. This could be a conditional agreement that might much later become unconditional and settle months or even years after that. So a person could easily hold a property for well over two years and still be caught. The Bright Line test will remove the subjective test of the person's intention on purchase. But the main criticism is that it will now catch people who genuinely purchased a long-term investment but have sold within two years due to a genuine change of circumstances. These capital gains would not usually have been taxable under the previous rules. Interestingly, Treasury expects only about $5 million additional tax revenue each year from the Bright Line test. This suggests to me that the rules are more politically motivated than an attempt to genuinely solve a problem in the tax system. Most likely, the only people who will be caught are those who find themselves with changed circumstances and have to sell within two years of acquisition. Others will either already be paying tax because they bought with the intention of resale, or they'll simply delay their sale to fall outside the two-year period. This is a complex area. It's impossible to give proper advice in three minutes, so please, as always, give us a call and get good advice before taking a tax position. And thanks for listening, and please hit the subscribe button below for more updates.